so that's going to take some kind of stand remover. Base is chucked. Toronto trailing two zip, but Mickey Morandini comes through. Carlos Delgado, Tony Batista score. Morandini's two run single ties it at two. Bottom five, Blue Jays down 3 2. Brad Fulmer. A Rod, good player, not quite that tall. Base hit. Alex Gonzalez will score. Now we're knotted up at three. Same score, top eight. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Jay Buhner. What are you going to do, Jay? That's right. He's laying down a sack bunt for the first time in two years. It's good fundamental baseball, people. Now, you've moved him over. Let's get him home. Mike Cameron. He doesn't want to run laps, so he gets the guy in from third with less than two outs. Sack fly. Al Martin tagging. Scores easily. Seattle goes up 4-3. And kids, that's just a solid lesson right there. Same score in the ninth. Kazuhiro Suzaki. Two outs, get Shannon Stewart to David Bell. That'll be 5-3 on the putout, 4-3 in the scorebook. The M's win it. Sasaki, an AL rookie record, 32nd save. Buhner sack bunt, his first since July 10th, 1998, when you have against the A's, and a little offense never, never hurt anybody who was hurting on the mound. This is Scott Hatterberg right off his fist. Perfect with spot. It'll look like a line drive in the box score. No bar, no weary. Scored three nothing Red Sox. Two batters later, the bas base is juiced for Manny Alexander. He's not good in this situation, or at least he usually isn't. 0 for 7 this season until that. A grand slam off Kevin Apier. First grand slam of Alexander's career, and it's 7 nothing. Same inning, Apier upset about the condition of the game balls. You know, the umpires rubbed them up, and Apier thought they didn't do a very good job. He thought they felt a little greasy. He wants people to look at them in the dugout. He wants anybody to look at them. Apier had his shortest outing of the year, two and two-thirds innings. Meanwhile, the aforementioned Mr. Shurik getting Stanley, Mike Stanley on a curveball, and then Adam Pyatt. Six strikeouts for Shurik, all of them coming on curveballs, and the Red Sox win it 10 to 3 as Shurik picks up his first win since May 15th. The Red Sox with some clutch hitting. Bottom first, Kent Bottenfield pitching to Barry Bonds, the finest player in the universe. He shows it. That's a two run homer, his 42nd. The Giants up 2 to nothing. Bonds, he gets to trot. Top third, Giants up 4 2. Kirk Reeder. Getting some help in the field off Mike Lieberthal, and there's Ellis Burks. Good gloves, save runs. Everybody's got a glove, everybody using it. Rich Aurelia, former driller. Scott Rowland pulling it down, and then they double off the runner over at first. We watch again, and that, my friends, is some major ups by Scott Rowland. Brian Hunter, ground to short, really. He can play defense, too. From the grass in the outfield, you are oot. Bottom fifth, Giants up 4-3, runner on. Bond sends one deep, and it's headed to the bay, and it's foul. Big yellow folder. Three pitches later, Bottenfield. I'm not sure he wants to pull the trigger on that, but he does. Strike three, Bonds just admires it. Bottom seven, Giants up 6-5. Ed Bosberg in now, and Bonds. That's a pop-up. Right into the paying customers in the outfield seats. Bonds 43rd of the season. Giants up 7-5 and win it by a count of 8-5. Bonds second straight multi-homer game. 46th of his career. He has Johnson, two of the top five lefties. Winning percentage since World War II. Tom Glavin picking off Tony Womack, but then the throw gets away. Womack to third. He's going to score on a sack fly. One zip, D-backs, and Glavin. That's not how he wanted that first inning to go, obviously. Bottom one, one on Randy Johnson, facing Chipper Jones. And Chipper, he's strong. I bet he could lift like 100 pounds. Going the other way is 31st, a two-run shot. He now has four homers in his career off Johnson, 2-1 Braves. Greg Colburn, he knows how to hit home runs. Good height on that one off Clavin, his 11th of the year. We're tied at two in the drama's building. Hey, one year ago to the day, September 5th, 1999, you got Chipper Jones, although it was daylight, in a Randy Johnson, Tom Glavin matchup at the TED, hitting a home run. Later that day, he pulls one the other way, a slider deep to left for his second of the day. Reese, watch close. This is spooky, spooky stuff here. Oh, foreshadowing. Yeah, back to Tuesday. Not a replay. It's Chipper gone. He is officially unslumped. His 32nd. Now five homers off Johnson in his career. Four, two Braves. All the ribs for Chip. Andres Galarraga. The big unit is not a cat person. Six hits, five runs, and six innings. It's the fifth time the Braves have gone back to back this season. Five, two. Top eight, two on, two outs. Tied run at the plate, and John Rocker. Colburn, and how about that? Sliding, 
Rocker, oh, nice. pretty play, and then he goes one, two, three in the ninth, and the Braves win it by a count of five to two. Glavin's now 12, won 12 of his last 13 decisions, first in the NL to 19 wins, and he's nine and one after an Atlanta loss. Friend, they're going to have to expand the rosters to more than 40 before he gets activated. <laughs> Taking on the Reds, look at Robin Ventura, robbing Jason LaRue. Flat out getting it done. Bottom seven, Mets have a 2-1 lead. Man on second, Rick Reed has really pitched well. Dave Wallace wants that ball. He needs that ball. Reed doesn't want to give it to him. Going to bring in Rick White. Bringing in the bullpen has been a dangerous proposition for the Mets lately. And Chris Dines, the knock to left. Kim Barty ties the game at two. And Reed, I told you I should have stayed. Top nine, Scott Sullivan. Sit on it, Piazzi. Three strikeouts on the night for Sullivan. Mets, no hits since the fourth inning. We go to the tenth. We're all tied up. Todd Zeal doing his best Jim Edmonds impression. A solo job, number 18, and the Mets had a 3-2 lead, and they would hang on to win it by that score. New York getting its first win this month. We date back to last year. They had been 1-13 in September regular season games prior to tonight, or prior to Tuesday night. Armando Benitez gets his 37th save. That's just one short of Franco's team record set in 1998. Red shortstop Barry Larkin will have arthroscopic surgery to clean out his left knee Friday and most likely will miss. And Beret against Greg Vaughn. He's known as a good ball striker. Vaughn's 25th home run and the Devil Rays had a 3-0 lead. Bottom of the third, Kenny Lofton. Two runners on. Paul Wilson's pitching. Lofton slaps into the 6-4-3. Wilson went 5-4 hits, gave up two earned. Bottom six, Devil Rays up 4-3. Tony Fiore, we're going to hear more about him in a bit. Jim Tomey logs on. He is part of the Gone Network. His 33rd ties the game at 4-4. Four and four. Same inning, here's Lofton with the bases juiced. Slapped it again, and this time it found a hole. David Segui would score. Travis Fryman would follow him. Throw the plate is not in time to get Travis Fryman, and the Indians go up 6-4. Top eight, here's Vaughn. Devil Rays trailed 7-4. Vaughn going for another one. Beautifully timed by Dave Roberts at the wall, and he hangs on, and so did the Indians. 7-4 the final. Cleveland at a high water mark for the season. Starting for the injured Bernie Williams. He's going to be out four to six with sore muscles, and Joe Randa says, bummer. Bellinger is there to make the catch. Top three, Jeff Supon pitching to Bellinger, and go catch this one. If you want to jump over that wall, sixth homer for Bellinger, game tied at one. Still top three, Yanks up. Bases loaded, Tino Martinez sends one out towards Carlos Beltran, makes the great grab, but Polonia tags and scores, Yanks up 3-1. Bottom three, David Cohn pitching to Ray Sanchez. Sanchez, not your textbook bunt. Coney getting over there, dives for it, but lands on that left shoulder and he's hurting. We watch the replay. Coney gonna land hard on the left shoulder, dislocates it, had to have it pop back into place, and clearly his night over. Top eight, bases loaded. Brent Storm talks it over with Andy Larkin. Don't know what he said, but he said, don't throw a gopher ball to Scott Brosh. He said, next time you say, boy, there better be one around, and that ball is moist. Grand Slam is second of the year. Storm's reaction is not good. 14th homer for Brosh. The Yanks win at 10-4. Dwight Gooden rolls out of the pen to throw five and a third innings and get the win. Joe Torre says the X-rays on Cone, quote, Clark. Clark goes with it, gets a knock. J.D. Drew and Jim Evans score. Clark plays supernatural against Santana. Eight for eight lifetime. Cards lead 2-0. Top six, Britt Remus has a no-hitter through five and two-thirds, but Vlad has had enough of that. Double inside the bag. Couple of runs score. Guerrero cuts the lead to 6-2, but overall, Remus made him say uncle. Five and two-thirds, one hit, three earned, four walk. Bottom six, Ray Langford. He is a lumberjack and he's okay. Against Anthony Telford, a solo job is 22nd. Cardinals win at 7-6. That's six in a row for them, matching their season high. 16 of 20 overall. Dad Helton, he's slumping though. 0 for 15 at home versus the Cubs, but not anymore. A 3-2 fastball off Jamie Arnold and make him 5 for 5 off Arnold. 34th home run. Helton, third, two zip rocks. Strikes out there, so now he's back down to 387. He's at 388 for a while. Fourth inning. Todd Walker on third. Todd Hollingsworth, boops, and Eric Young had Walker down, and, well, Joe Girardi couldn't hang on to it. Three zip rocks. Helton again in the fifth. Three-two Rockies. And Helton 
base knock. Two for three. Ends up two for four. Right where he started. 387. The Rockies win at 10-2. Julian Tavares allows four hits in his first career complete game. He's won five straight starts for the second straight game. Todd Walker misses the cycle by against Mike Sorotka. Sorotka showing off. Behind the back and getting Sheldon easily. Top five. Score tied at one. Bases are full. 3-2 pitch, two outs to Rafael Palmero and Soraka, the more customary out game, still tied at one. Jump ahead to the ninth. Runners at the corners, two outs for Chad Curtis. And Curtis smokes one to left. Frank Catalanato would score, and the Rangers win it by a count of two to one. The White Sox, second worst in the American League in fielding percentage and errors per game. And Jose Valentin committed his 31st error of the season. Down one zip, Dean Palmer on second, Matt Weiss facing Tony Clark. Tony Clark, 5 for 12 since returning from the DL in his first homer since July 28th. And nice job of the bullpen catcher. Bottom third, Billy McMillan with the bases chucked. He delivers. Bobby Higginson will score. Dean Palmer will score. McMillan, he was the first and only batter. Juan Alvarez faced, didn't get the job done. Top eight, Angels coming back. 7-4, Adam Kennedy off Matt Anderson, no relation. Tim Salmon will score easily, and Scott Spezio, he's in the hot box. Weep. Palmer takes him out, 7-5 Tigers. Ninth inning, Todd Jones, Mo Vaughn looking at it. Mo 0 for 5, four Kaolas, 152 on the season. Tigers win at 7-5. Jones ties the club record and leaves the AL and saves with 38. Florida still with an eye on 500, though. Tony McKnight, second start facing Henry Rodriguez. And how about Moises Alou giving effort? And effort, of course, is the key to success. Bottom four, Astros leading 6-0. Joe Strong to Bill Spires with two on, and they get to come home. Off the 2-2 pitch, McKnight scoring. Julio Lugo scores. Spires with three for four, two ribs. The Astros were up 8-0 and go on to win it by a count of 9-5. McKnight, his first big league win among those scoring runs. Jeff Bagwell, 127th of the season, leads the majors. Reed Bird keep those. Yes, Carlos Perez. A little duck snort. It's going to fall. Alex Ramirez, Enrique Wilson would score. It's 3 nothing Pirates. You should check out the standings. Jose Silva pitched well and gets a little defensive help. Pat Mears getting it done. It's Adrian Beltre, top four. Runner on second, two outs. It's 5 nothing. Carlos Perez dealing to Brian Giles and goes down in pain. He would leave the game with a strained rotator cuff. Hope it's nothing more serious than that. Pirates win the game 8 nothing. They've outscored the Dodgers 20-1 in the last two games, and the Bucks extend their winning streak to a season-high five straight. Beer makers, Padres, Ryan Klesko, Phil Nevin, and they're just thinking, thank goodness we don't have to face Jeff D'Amico. Top four, Jeremy Burnitz, Jay Watasik. Burnitz sends one to Nevin, and he bobbles, and then he overthrows Klesko. Runners advance two airs for Nevin. Padres leading the NL with 120 ease. Bottom four. Paul Rigdon against Nevin, and if you let one in, you got to drive one in, and he does it by hitting the ball out. Padres go up 3-1, Nevin's 31st. That's also 3-1 right next to each other. Richie Sexton did not eat knockwurst against Jay Watasik. Padres win at 3-1. Watasik tied a career high with 10 Ks to improve to 3-0 in his last four starts.